to this episode of Ink It Up with Jessica TV. I'm Jessica Taylor and in this video I'm going to show you how to make one card four different ways. This is a good way to use supplies you already have to make a number of unique cards without reinventing the wheel. I used the same snowflake dies, the same embossing folder, and the same words to make four very different cards. This first one is all white, very elegant, all it is is white cardstock with the greeting stamped in smoky slate. This one adds a little silver elegance. All I did was switch out the snowflakes to silver foil and I used a pre-made note card that is silver edged. This third one, I swapped out the white background for a pool party to add a little bit of color. I embossed the greeting in white and I added the center snowflake is out of glimmer paper, so it's very glittery and shiny. And finally for this last one, I wanted even a bigger burst of color and I stamped the greeting in Bermuda Bay ink and the cardstock here is pool party with a frame of Bermuda Bay to really make it pop. The other thing about this card is that this snowflake here is fuzzy. This is made out of a white velvet paper that just adds a lot of texture to your card. The other difference that you'll see in these cards is that two of them have rhinestones in the middle and two of them do not. I could have put rhinestones on all of them, and the reason that I didn't is sometimes it's harder to mail cards that have the rhinestone on them because they add a little bit of hardness that the post office doesn't like. And so when you're mailing cards like this with a rhinestone, I always put another piece of cardstock over top of it when I mail it to kind of protect that because in the mailing, the rhinestone can also shift. That's why if I was going to make a bunch of these for Christmas cards, I would probably stick with the cards that don't have a rhinestone in the middle so that I know that they would be easier to mail. Let me go ahead and give you some tips for making this all white card and then you can take this basic idea and make cards just like it with whatever supplies you have. For this card, it's actually all whisper white cardstock. I have a piece for the front that I'm going to emboss that is four inches by five and a quarter inches. I have my card base that is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, just folded in half. And then I have the final piece that I cut when I cut up this full sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper, and I'm gonna use that to cut out my snowflakes. The first thing you're going to want to do is stamp your greeting. I'm gonna ink this up with smoky slate ink. For the all white version, I just wanted a really um, neutral color. I'm gonna stamp that just at the bottom of my paper. This is the four inch by five and a quarter inch piece and just center it right at the bottom. Next, I'm going to do my embossing. To add this fun embossed snow falling effect to the background of my card, I'm gonna start with my Big Shot platform, add a clear cutting pad, and then I'm going to take my softly falling folder and position my stamped card front inside of it. This side that usually has a logo, I consider the front side, and that's where I want to put the front of my card in. Now I want this part here where there's more snowfall to be at the top, and then like it's gently falling down. So I'm gonna put my words into the crease of the folder, and just position it so that these bumps here don't interfere with my words. Then I'll put another clear cutting pad on top of that and run it through my Big Shot. And there is my embossed paper that it looks like there's snow falling. The next thing I would do is go ahead and tape this to the front of my card base. I like to use the silicone craft mat underneath when I'm putting my adhesive on so that it catches any extra adhesive if I go off the edges. Also, I put adhesive almost all the way around, especially when I've embossed a piece of cardstock because I don't want my cards to fall apart when I send them. The next step is to cut out our snowflakes. Let me give you some tips for that. When you are cutting out framelit or thinlit dies with your Big Shot, you're going to need your Big Shot platform plus the thin die adapter, or you can also use your magnetic cutting pad. Then you're gonna need a clear cutting pad on top of that, your cardstock, and then you'll place the dies ridged side down another clear cutting pad on top of that, and then you can run it through your Big Shot. 
I run this through my Big Shot three times to make sure that I get a really good cut. Once I've run it through my Big Shot, I put it on this mat that comes with the Big Shot die brush. And then I use my brush to just run over the top. And this is gonna poke out all those little pieces. So you can see there's one snowflake. And here is the other. If you have any stubborn pieces left in your die, I like to take the pointy tip of the take your pick tool and just use that to poke them out. I found though if I run my dies through three times and use my die brush, the pieces pretty much pop out on their own. You can use any adhesive you like to attach the snowflakes to your card. For this bigger snowflake, because there's a solid piece here, I'm just gonna run some snail across the middle. I really only want the middle of my snowflake to be taped down because I like that the edges kind of pop up. It gives it a little more dimension. Just make sure I don't have any adhesive where I don't want it. And then I will place that right in the center of my card. Actually not in the center, centered this way a little up from the words. Then for this piece, I like to use my fine tip glue. And I've showed this in a video before, but I like to take the top off and use a toothpick. Then I can just dip my toothpick in and kind of slide it across my snowflake. If you have some of the kind of self-adhesive die cut sheets that you can put on your cardstock before you cut it, you just need to remember to do it before you cut it and then it adds like a sticker backing all the way across of it, that, all the way across it that makes it easy to put on your card. However, you have to remember to do that before you do your die cutting and I almost always forget. So once I have the glue on it that I want, I'll just pick that up and put it right in the center of my big snowflake. And I'm okay if the edges of this pop up because once again, it just gives it a little dimension, but you wanna make sure that at least a good portion of the center is stuck down. And finally, I'll add my rhinestone to the middle. If you take your take your pick tool, this pointy end piece, if you turn that and pop it out, it's going to give you this flat piece here that makes it really easy to pick up your rhinestones. You can just slide it under and then pick it up and put it right on your card where you want it. I like to push it into place to make sure that it stays. So once again, here are four different cards that you can make using the same supplies, except for a few different papers and embossing powders and ink. So I want to encourage you to use some of the supplies you already have to make one card four different ways. I can't wait to see what you make. Happy stamping!